What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Philippe and Rena and Rena are now really getting interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Felipe and Rena are both. This exact same strength, the exact same intensity, exact same pressure. We'll have to wait and see how all this goes and see which one of these two starts to really overtake one or another. Look at First of all, look at how close Felipe and Rina are to each other. There's most likely going to be a Fujiwara effect uh, going on with both of these systems. We'll have to see which one is the more dominant one. Felipe does, I will say, look a lot more organized on satellite than Rina does at the current time. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on it. As time continues to go on, I think this is Rena right over here uh, with, with uh, the center being rather exposed. So once again, have to monitor that situation as time continues to go on. Now we're going to go ahead and show you what we're really looking at, which is Felipe and Rena. Here's the NHC advisories. Here's what we have with Felipe. The cone is basically having this thing stall for the next couple of days before just doing a hard launch to the north by st uh, starting on Monday. And then from th and then from there we'll have to wait and see how this goes because this is a very weird situation, very uh, very problematic situation as well. Well, not exactly problematic; it's just incredibly rare. That's the problem. So that's what we have right here. The current location is 18.3 degrees north, 55.3 degrees west, about 510 miles east of the northern Leeward Islands. It is it is maximum sustained winds are 45 miles per hour. The pressure is 1,003 millibars and is moving west-southwest at 2 miles per hour at this current time. Uh, tropical storm force winds extend out 200, uh, 140 miles from the center. I apologize. I was about to say 220 kilometers. But yeah, and a lot of it is pretty much on the eastern half of the storm. The storm is definitely getting more organized as we speak. However, we're not quite there. And with the interaction that Rena ha has at that point, we'll have to wait and see how this whole thing goes. Here's the discussion we have for Philippe right here. Felipe, rather. There is little change in Philippe's uh, satellite appearance this morning. The storm remains sheared with a low-level center located on the western edge of the main area of, of deep convection. Satellite estimates continue to have a large spread, ranging from 30 to 55 kilometers. ASCAT data should be available soon, and hurricane hunters are scheduled to investigate Felipe this afternoon. We actually can go ahead and pull that up right here. Here's the recon. The re uh, recon's going into Felipe, uh, Felipe as this current time. Here is the eye of that storm right now. The eye actually has this at 1,002 millibars, but the winds are at 16 knots, so... For every 10 knots, uh, reduce it a millibar, and we're around 1,000, 1,001 millibars for Felipe at this current time. And as we take a look at the flight level winds, they're around 35 to 40 knots in a lot of these areas. SFMRs are about 35, about 35 knots. So overall, nothing too significant. They're not even in the area of biggest convection yet, so we'll have to wait and see how this whole thing plays out in the next little bit or so. But either way, Hurricane Hunters are in there. They're finding a, a, a decreasing pressure in Felipe, so we'll have to keep a very close eye on it for the time being. Felipe has only uh, moved 40 miles in the past 24 hours. It's been drifting southwest during that time. Uh, the slow motion is mainly due to Tropical Storm Rena, several hundred miles to its east. Since these tropical cyclones are expected to continue to interact with each other, Felipe is forecast to crawl, uh, continue to crawl southwest southwestward. And then uh, Rena is expected to separate from Felipe as a mid-level ridge builds up. All, and here, that's what we have going on. Although Felipe is still affected by shear, the environment over the next several days appear to become less hostile. High, uh, light to moderate wind shear, increasing mid-level humidities around the storm, and very warm sea surface temperatures should allow Felipe to gradually strengthen. For the next 12 hours, it's supposed to be 45 miles per hour. Then it's going to start gradually strengthening to 50, then 60, then 65, then get up to a 70 mile per hour strong tropical storm. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. This could potentially become a hurricane according to several models that I have been keeping an eye on. So that's what we have going on with Felipe. Felipe at this current time. Here's what we have with Tropical Storm Rena. This thing is also 45 miles per hour. This thing also has a pressure of 1,003 millibars. Its current location is 19.4 degrees north, 47 degrees west, or about 10, 1055 miles east of the northern Leeward Islands. It is moving north-northwest at 6 miles per hour, mainly due to interaction with Felipe at that current time. Tropical Storm Force winds extend out 70 miles from the center compared to Felipe, where it's 140 miles. So this thing definitely is more concentrated as a, as a system than Felipe is at this current time. Here's what we have going on with the discussion. 
It is forecast to start gradually weakening at this point and become a remnant low in the next uh, 96 hours and be di fully dissipated in the next five days. And since the and since the exposed layer center of Rena indicates a sheared environment and strong deep layer shear is forecast to persist, the official NHC track is gradually we uh, weakening in support of the latest intensity guidance. Early next week, Rena is forecast to become a post-tropical remnant, potentially gets absorbed into Felipe as time continues to go on, and will have to continue to monitor these two threats as time continues to progress. I'm also paying attention to a potential situation going on in the Caribbean as we are continuing to see several models point out a potential Central American gyre potential, uh, developing a low pressure system. So we'll have to keep a very, very close eye out on that accord accordingly. And ladies and gentlemen, as we get into this active weather period, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting cater to your local area. For your for more information, you can find a link to their website in the description down below. And be sure to use code PREDICTOR for 50% off your first month. With that being said, folks, we're going to go ahead and get into some model runs and kind of give you a better understanding of what we're thinking is going on. So here's what we have with the European model. European has Felipe and Rita continuing to interact with each other. Felipe's forecast to kind of just stall uh, just east of the Lesser Antilles, although some impacts for the Leeward Islands is not out of the question before the trough starts pulling the storm to the north as a tropical storm, and then from there it starts to gradually strengthen, potentially down to a Category 1 uh, hurricane as a 994 millibar system. With the pressure only continuing to decrease, where we could see a mid-range Category 1 according to the European model, steering currents aren't exactly the best at this point and with what's going on with the european it's actually forecast to push it further and further to the east in the tropics which is pretty surprising to say at the very least you don't see that uh, every day uh, unless the tr unless you see the just steering currents absolutely collapse so we'll have to keep an eye on it and see how this progresses now we're going to go ahead and show you the gfs model here is the gfs we have pulled up gfs model has this thing gradually uh, has basically felipe organizing developing it's kind of just stalling out east of the lesser antilles while rena is basically doing its thing the fujiwara effect kicks in according to the gfs and rena gets absorbed into hurricane felipe at that point it's a 963 millibar system category 2 hurricane most likely and then things and then the gfs is also forecasting this to turn to the east right here which is pretty interesting because the steering currents are just showing this thing showing uh, just showing a complete collapse all the way towards the azores islands and Potential impacts to the Azores are possible, but then the steering currents kick back in. It's a very weird setup right now, so please take this with a massive grain of salt. I don't really trust the track really further than like eight, than like like six days out. So please do keep that in mind. We'll continue to keep you updated for sure. However, I just don't exactly trust this whole track situation we have pulling up right there from the GFS. And with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and next show you the CMC because the CMC has been pretty interesting. To say at the very least, the CMC is is kind of doing what the Europeans doing, bringing impacts to the Lesser Antilles before starting to push further to the north. Rena, and unlike the GFS, the Rena just absolutely dissipates, and there's really not much of a Fujiwara effect like the GFS is calling for. So that's what we have going on with the CMC, at least for Felipe. However, another thing I'm paying attention to is that Central American gyre that I was talking to you about earlier. The CMC is about six days out when that gyre starts to really organize and develop as time continues to go on. And things get pretty interesting right here because the gyre, or rather the low pressure, a, tr a tropical low, starts to really just kind of hug the coast of Central America before making landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula near uh, the near the border order of Belize and then after crossing uh, the parts of southeastern Mexico, re-enters the waters, and we'll have to wait and see how that whole thing goes uh, as time continues to go on. We've been seeing continued model runs of this thing potentially happening, so we'll have to keep a very, very close eye on it as time continues to progress. We'll keep you updated here. But meanwhile, with uh, with Rena and Felipe, uh, Felipe, the CMC has been pretty much doing what the Europeans doing, bringing impacts, although as a stronger system towards the Leeward Islands, and then just drifting out to sea, and then kind of the Steering currents just collapse from there, and we don't know what's going to happen at that point in time. So that's the, the CMC model right there. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the NavGem model. The NavGem has continued to show more and more signs of organization, more and more signs of development. 
uh, has Rena just kind of uh, actually resurging quite a bit in the subtropical Atlantic, potentially becoming a tropical storm or hurricane before make, uh, before approaching the Azores Islands, similar to what Philippe will do. The Fili Felipe for the Navgem is actually having this approach the Azores Islands as either a hurricane or post-tropical cyclone. So if you're in the Azores Islands, you guys should probably keep an eye out for that as time continues to go on. And we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel, as this does appear to be a potential threat to those areas over there. So that's that's the nav gem model as of right now. The last one we're going to go ahead and show you is the icon model, which has been continuing to show more and more uh, signs of interesting s development. The icon has this thing approaching cl very close to the Lesser Antilles before kind of moving more or less to the west-northwest, and then the high-pressure ridge starts building back up, and it kind of just stays right there, as the NavGem has been telling us that it will. So that's what we have going on with all the operational models. Now we're, the last thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the conditions going on. Here's the global sea temperatures. Very, 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 very warm waters for uh, the Caribbean, for, uh, for the main development region, for where Felipe and Reina are. So 30-plus degrees Celsius, where Felipe is about 29-plus degrees Celsius, where Rena is for those of you who live in the United States that's 86 degrees Fahrenheit and 84 degrees Fahrenheit respectively so there is no a shortage of very warm waters these have been very record-setting water temperatures all season long and these are going to continue into October potentially into November and we'll have to wait and see for December so that's what we have with the global sea temperatures here's what we have with the ocean heat content OHC if that gyre does form enters this part of the Caribbean, there is ample uh, str uh, ample availability for str rapid strengthening. We're looking at OHC in the Caribbean of over 200 OHC, which that is absolutely massive for ocean heat content, and there's so much of it. This is record-breaking right here, and where Felipe is, it's about to enter an area of 150 OHC, so we'll have to wait and see how it takes full advantage of it with the decreasing wind shear, mind you. So that's what we have with the wind shear. The wind shear is affecting Rena as continuing to be more or less persistent, but the wind shear around uh, Felipe has continued to show signs of weakening. So once it enters that area of warm water and ocean heat content, we'll have to wait and see how it plays with that because that could be a sign of potentially quick strengthening. And the uh, and with this dry, the shear is going to fluctuate in the Caribbean Sea. That's just something we'll have to keep an eye on as time continues to go on. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new it helps us out helps us make more videos like these the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather but with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe